Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. As you can see there is a little bit of change here and new surrounding. I moved to Berlin this week but the rest of my channel will actually stay the same. It will just look a little bit differently. Today we're talking about a very awesome topic and that is app security. So many people actually asked me in the past if I can make a video about how you can secure your app before you actually release it to Google Play. And yes, here is this video and to show you that I will actually show you a very awesome service which is called AppSweep, which is made by GuardSquare and that is the sponsor of this video. And with this awesome completely free service, you can easily check if your app has known security vulnerabilities. And GuardSquare is not only the creator of AppSuite, no, they are also the creator of ProGuard, which I'm sure you know of as an Android developer. So they do definitely understand something of mobile security. So I will show you the whole service in this video so you'll learn about how you can actually upload your APKs to scan these for security vulnerabilities. You will learn how you can create projects to work together in your team with, so you can have multiple scans over a period of time. You can compare these, all that stuff. I will even show you how you can also automate these scans so you don't always need to drag and drop these into their website. As you can see, here I am in an empty Android Studio project. You can just create the same and I just want to show you how we could now make sure or how we could take this app that we built here in Android Studio and scan it using AppSweep. So, so what we want to do here is we want to generate a new APK. As I said, just completely plain or so your project. You can also just use your project that you're currently working on, whatever kind of project you like. We, of course, need to generate an APK now. And we want to go to build, build bundles APKs. We can also generate a bundle. Um, so if you don't know the difference, a bundle is basically something that uh, Google Play will take. It contains all your apps resources for different screen sizes, for different types of API levels and all that stuff. And Google Play will make sure that if a user downloads that, the user will only get the resources they actually need for that specific phone. So that's the difference between bundle and APK. Um, I'll just use APK here. You can choose anything and then uh, great list building. And you can see uh, the uh, build APKs was successful. And we can click on locate to actually open that in your file browser. And then you need to go to the first link in this video's description, which is the AppSweep website. So that is appsweep.guardsquare.com. So you will find that here, first link in this uh, video's description. And what we want to do here is we have this area here where we can simply drag our APK that we just generated. Let's do this. So I will drag it into here. It is uploading that file. And as you can see, you don't even need an account to scan your app. You can create an account and I will also get you the benefits you actually get when doing that. But you can see if we scroll down, we have our app debug APK here. And you can also see some past scans of mine, but this is the relevant one. It is currently running and we now need to wait a little moment. We can also click on that and it tells us, okay, it's currently analyzing the build and it will notify us when that is current, when that is actually done. And when that is done, it will look somehow like this. If you upload at least an empty project here, um, don't worry, quite a lot of information. And you can see without even creating an account, you get tons of information about your app. Um, so let's go through this step by step, not all of it yet. Um, at the end of this video, you will understand all this and what this stands for. But let's take a look at the most important things. You can see you have uh, one high vulnerability issue or one high risk issue. You can say one medium follow and yeah, it just tells you how many dependencies you actually have in your app. And here you also get a little bit of a graph or like a diagram rather with yeah, a very nice visualization actually, how many, like what kind of proportion of your app is uh, high risk, medium risk and low risk. Let's take a look because that's just an empty project. Let's see what it actually tells us. What is a high risk and medium risk? You can see down here we have six issues that were found and you can also see some other cool features are coming soon. Like if you have an insecure data storage, uh, but the important part is here, hi. Um, the Android manifest attribute debuggable is set to true. Why is that the case? Well, because we uploaded a debug version of our APK. So if we actually click on that, then the cool thing is it, it does, doesn't just tell us that our app has this vulnerability. No, it even gives us a very detailed and very readable, in my opinion, 
description of that vulnerability or of that issue of our app, why it's an issue and how you can actually fix it. So of course, if you have an app that you publish to Google Play and that would be a debug version, then that wouldn't be very good because an attacker could actually debug your application and get some kind of information that way, which is exactly described here. And yeah, it found that in the Android manifest because it contained that debuggable, debuggable attribute and that was set to true. I think we don't see that here in Android Studio, if you take a look. Um, no, actually not. It's not in the application uh, tag here. Uh, but I think what happens when we build this debug version of the app is that uh, it will simply add that to our manifest. It definitely does not happen if we build the actual release version of the app. So if we then go back and take a look what other vulnerabilities were detected. The APK allows clear text communication. Well, clear text communication means um, you use HTTP, for example, so no HTTPS, no encryption, or um, could also be like web sockets that are not encrypted. And AppScript actually detects that, which is pretty cool because it uh, quickly happens that you accidentally set this use clear text traffic flag to true because very often you build some server and you run that on localhost and on localhost you don't have any um, certificate or no http certificate you can actually encrypt your traffic with so you just add this attribute to your manifest and set it to true just to test the app which is totally fine but as soon as you actually release the app you want to remove this because the app might use some libraries for example and those libraries could potentially use clear text traffic. So non-encrypted traffic, which is of course a risk when it comes to, yeah, for if there are attackers who might spy on the data your app actually sends to your servers. And one thing that I actually also learned from this here is that if we take a look again in Android Studio, um, well, I added this flag here and set this to true, but even if we remove this, then it will still detect that. And the reason it will do that is you can see uh, plus below Android 28, clear text traffic is enabled by default. So if your app actually targets uh, API levels um, 28 and below, then that means on these API levels, clear text traffic is enabled. So even if you don't have this attribute in your manifest, this will still be an issue here in App Sweep because it could be it could run on on a lower API level and allow clear text traffic there. And the solution to this is pretty simple. It even tells you that if you have a security file, then you need this tag in your um, manifest and else you simply set this use clear text traffic attribute to false. So you explicitly mention it's false. And you also always get some recommendations here, which is yeah, in the end, just what I mentioned here. But sometimes they really recommend you some good solutions that they think you should do. Let's go back and take a look at the low vulnerability, um, uh, low risk vulnerabilities. For example, the app logs information. Well, of course, if your app has logs, then it could happen that attackers actually see these logs and gain some information that is helpful for them to actually crack your app or whatever they want to do. And you can see we have tons of logs. Those are really not issues here because those, those are coming from uh, Compose in this case and Android components, uh, but it is still helpful to go through this list here and see if uh, you might maybe have some kind of logs that you're that you're logging in your code. One solution they recommend, of course, they are the creators of ProGuard. Um, they want you to fix that with ProGuard, which is totally fine, which is a brilliant solution if you use the default logs. Um, so you can just add this to your ProGuard config, or you could also use a library like Timber, which I like to use for logging. Then that already makes sure that your app doesn't lock anything in production. So if you have the release built, but that of course only applies to the logs that actually come from Timber. So if you have some libraries that log information, then uh, using Timber wouldn't do anything for that because the library does not use Timber. In that case, you should fix it with ProGuard. And overall, it really doesn't mean that you have to get these vulnerabilities here to zero. So that app sweep tells you oh, there are no vulnerabilities anymore. Um, it is rather something that will tell you a lot more than those issues that are really harmful for your app. But it will present you all that information in a very nice way. So you can just go through it and filter what is really relevant and what could really be an issue when you release your app. So that is already pretty cool. Let's actually go to 
sign in because now I want to show you what you can actually do if you create a free account here on AppSweep and that is a lot more than you can do with no account and you can see you you can already do quite a lot without any, uh, without any account. Let's go to sign in and I already created an account here. If you don't have one, which I assume, then you need to click on uh, don't have an account yet, sign up now. I will simply click on sign in and here we go. So you can see we don't have any project yet. What is a project here in uh, terms of AppSweep? A project is something you can work with together on your team. So if you're familiar with Firebase, for example, then uh, these projects here in AppSweep are very comparable to a Firebase project. So you can link your app to that project or you can kind of um, send scans to that project, you can send your APKs in a specific project. And then you, you have some kind of a timeline where you can see, okay, um, on June 16th, I actually had this scan, I had this many vulnerabilities, then on June 22nd or so, I had a little bit less vulnerabilities. So you can see how the security vulnerabilities developed over a period of time. So let's actually click new project here to create one. And I'll just call this app sweep demo. If you use that for your actual product, I would of course choose that as a name, you could give it a description, demo description, for example, and we click create. And there we go, that's our project. We can click on that. And right now we don't get any information because we don't have any builds. So what AppSweep calls build is, well, one build of your app that you submit for a scan here on this website. And you can see we again have this upload build button, which you can again use to just upload your APK here directly into this specific project in this case. So that's nothing new. Let's actually see what we can now do here. We can go to settings. And here we could change the project name, we could delete it, which we don't want to do now. But we have a tab for the project team. And that is something you only get with these projects. So that is something you need an account for and one big benefit of an account. If you work in a team on an app, and you want to have regular security scans with AppSweep, then you can create a project that you share among all your team members. So every team member can submit security scans and also see these scans over a period of time. If you want to invite a team member, then you simply go to this project team tab and you click add member. And then you simply enter an email address, they will get an email, invitation email, and they can register here at AppSweep and they will get access to your project. Then we have a tab for API keys. Well, that is something I will also show you in a moment, which is um, using AppSweep with Gradle. So how we can actually automate these um, scans here. So we don't always need to drag and drop our APK into this web panel. Let's skip this for now and also like suppressions. So if there are specific um, findings that you don't want to show up, then you can add this to this uh, suppressions here. And you have a GitHub integration. So you can directly integrate app sweep into GitHub. So you already directly see that scan information in GitHub. So that is very similar to if you have some kind of continuous integration setup, then if you have like if you have a commit or a push or a pull request to master branch or so, then in GitHub typically there are some check marks or it says, okay, your tests are running and something very similar will happen here with AppSweep if you actually install AppSweep here on GitHub and add that to your repository. But let's actually start to take a look into how we can use Gradle to automate our scans. And for that, we want to go to API keys, as I mentioned before. And since we're using a Gradle, a Gradle version, which is above 7.0, we want to copy this plugins block, or rather just this line. And we want to go to Android Studio. And we want to go to build.gradle, the app file. And here on the plugins, we want to paste this line. And that is the AppSweep Gradle plugin which well contains all the functionality to send your APK after a build to app sweeps or to their servers and to automatically initiate a scan. And that Gradle plugin only works if you actually have an account because it must be linked to a project. And for that, it also needs an API key, which we can create here under API keys. So that's of course used to authenticate API requests. Again, that's completely free. You don't pay a bit for that. You can just create a new API key here and we can enter a name, what that's for. So here in this case, it's for Gradle. Click generate. And there we go. Um, you can see that's my API key. I can show you that here because I will delete the product afterwards. Anyways, we want to copy this here. And this will only show once. 
you can now take this API key and either, either store it in an environment variable, which you call app sweep API key like this. So that is just a local variable that you set this API key for. Um, the advantage is that you don't need to store it in your code. The disadvantage is that every team member actually needs to have this environment variable. Another option that we will actually use here is that we will put it into our builder Gradle app file. That is something that I only do for simplicity here because um, setting up environment variables works quite differently on each operating system. So that would be quite a lot to explain here for <laughs> if there are Linux users, if there are Mac users, if there are Windows users. So let's just go here and instead add an app sweep block, which is used to configure the plugin we added. And here we can specify an API key property, spelled like this, and simply paste what we copied from the AppSweep website. Then we can click Synchronize now, and uh, there are also some more configuration possibilities you have, which you can uh, find if you click here. Then uh, the uh, GitHub repository will open up, and here you can also find, for example, uh, this configurations block, you can add some tags, but that's something we're not going to do. Instead, we're going to go back to Android Studio. Actually, no, because I need to take a look how the Gradle task was called. Okay, so now that we added this Gradle plugin, that Gradle plugin added a task to Gradle. So a task is in the end just one thing Gradle should do. And that is called Upload to App Sweep Debug. So that would cause a build, a debug build. And after the build was successful, AppSweep will take this build and upload it to your project. It knows your project because you added this API key. So let's actually copy this line and go here to our studio, open our terminal, and let's clear this up and we paste this here. Then we can press enter. There we go. It's now building our app. And if everything is successful, then you can see build was successful. Now it uploaded our APK. And if you now go back to our web panel, go to our AppSweep demo project and take a look here. You can see that is actually the APK that we just generated via our Gradle command line and the status is currently running. You can see uh, there's also a progress bar and that is how you can actually very easily send and submit your APKs directly from the command line in Android Studio. That's of course much more convenient than always needing to generate an APK file and dragging it here into this uh, web panel. And also a very nice way to actually automate these scans because what I will also quickly show you is um, how, you can, how you can implement AppSweep as part of your CI pipeline, so continuous integration. If you don't know what that is, it's basically just um, a way to automate integrating your one branch into another branch. That's pretty much it. So usually when you work on a production app or like a, an industry level app in, in a company or so, then you don't all only work on the master branch. You have different branches. And um, when there's one more feature on one branch, for example, then you want to integrate that into the master branch and that process you want to automate. And one part of that automation could be running, um, running an app sweep build. So to automatically uh, submit that security scan. So we take a look here now, then we again have this app sweep demo build. We can click on that and that is nothing new. That is what I showed you before. But the difference, because we now added this um, as a project here, is we get a little dot here, which is our first build. And we see that we got six total issues here, which is yeah also a nice graph. And if we have more builds, then it will actually build a real graph here so we can see how the amount of issues develop over time. But as I said, I want to quickly show you how you could integrate App Sweep as part of your CI pipeline. I will show you that with Bitrise, which is my preferred CI tool for mobile apps, at least because they are fully specialized on that. And uh, this is actually part of a course that I'm currently preparing about continuous integration, continuous deployment um, and delivery. Uh, but that really doesn't matter. What I want to show you is how you can actually add AppSweep here. And that only uh, that doesn't only work for Bitrise. There are tons of other CI tools like uh, Fastline, Circle CI. Basically anything uh, that can run Gradle commands is able to also submit builds to AppSweep because in the end, as you just saw, we can just run a Gradle command and also do that via yeah, Gradle. And if your continuous integration tool can run Gradle commands, then you can also just 
use the Gradle command line. However, in Bitrise, we have a tool that we can add here to our pipeline. Let's say after we unit tested our app, we want to add another step here. This panel will open up. And if you don't have Bitrise, really don't worry, you don't need to create an account here. It's just um, to show you how you would add that here. You just search for App Sweep and you can see there is this um, action here on Bitrise. You can add that into your pipeline. You can rearrange that, of course, as normal here in uh, Bitrise. You need to provide your API key, ideally as a secret variable. And that's pretty much it. And that is part of your pipeline. So that way you don't need your API key in the Gradle file because you can use it as a secret here in Bitrise or whatever CI tool you actually like to use. However, that's something I won't trigger here. I just wanted to mention uh, that you can actually use this with common CI tools as well. One more thing that I want to do and I want to show you is if we go to Android Studio and we actually now want to upload the release build to App Sweep, you can see I set the minify enabled to true here. And if we do that via build, um, build APKs, and actually we first of all select the um, build variant release. So you go to build, um, it's like build variant and we want to uh, build the release build. What Minify enabled set to true does here is it will enable R8, which is a tool that will obfuscate your code. So it will take all your class names, all your function names, all your variable names and rename these to short unreadable names. So to single letters, to letter number combinations, something that is very hard to read and understand. And that makes it very hard to actually reverse engineer your app because an attacker can not easily regain information out of the source code. If all your classes would have very readable names, then that would be quite easy. And that is what Minify enabled set to true will do here, at least one thing it will do. And if we now actually build this, let's also build a bundle here so you can also see that this works. Then you can see that was successful. We want to locate this here and go back to a web panel. And we want to drag this here into this button, into our App Sweep demo project. You can see it's currently queued. Let's wait until the scan is actually finished. And there we go. You also just saw how that created kind of a graph here. Currently it's just a straight line, but the more builds you actually have here, the better it will look. Um, the important thing that I want to show you is if we click on this build now and we scroll down and click on this logging issue, then here you can see that, yeah, if we have a stack trace like here where it found where it found these logs, then that's quite unreadable. And that is exactly what this code obfuscation does here. So that x.e, for example, would, I don't know if it's a package name, if it's a class or so, um, it seems like a function or so, but yeah, that's exactly what code obfuscation does. It renames functions, variables, and classes to such names, so you have no idea what it does. But if you actually see such a stack trace here in App Sweep, then you want to understand what that code actually does. And if you use code obfuscation, then that's quite hard to do. So the way to fix this is to actually also upload a mapping file to App Sweep, which is kind of a file where R8 actually specifies, hey, these classes were mapped to these other class names. So for example, your main activity was mapped to X. And that way, if AppStrip uses that mapping file, it can easily understand which, um, which classes were mapped to X and it can kind of reverse that. So you can at least see these correct stack traces. How do you upload that mapping file? Well, luckily that is already automatically done by AppSweep. So if we just use the command line instead of just drag and dropping the APK into the web panel. So if we just go here and this time we want to build the release build. So we swap our debug with release. Then the Gradle plugin from App Suite will automatically just attach the mapping file it also generated to the APK and also upload that to App Suite. So you can see that is done. That was successful. If we go back to App Suite demo, so if we first of all click on our second build here, then you will see our obfuscation mapping was not provided. But if we actually go back and take a look at our third build, you can see now it starts to look like a graph. Then 
you can see obfuscation mapping is now applied. So that is automatically now done by the Gradle plugin. So you should always make sure to actually generate or to, to submit your APKs using the Gradle plugin or of course using a CI tool like Bitrise. And one thing I actually haven't shown you yet is the section here, which is for OWASP, the violations. OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project, quite a long abbreviation, but it's basically, yeah, some kind of a non-profit organization to improve software security, you can say. And here they just have some, yeah, kind of categories in which your security vulnerabilities that are detected here would fall. For example, if you have a network vulnerability like our ClearText traffic one, I think, yep, yeah, that is the ClearText traffic one, then it would fall under MSTG network. And yeah, the same, you would have one for storage, which is related to logging and some more. So if you're into these different categories here of OWASP, then that is also definitely a very helpful and relevant information. But that is pretty much it about AppSweep. So it's, it's a super simple tool to use and I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to use this because it's completely free. You can very easily integrate it into your project using Gradle. You can automate this very easily and you have a very nice visual representation here of what kind of security vulnerabilities your app actually has. It definitely doesn't harm you to just um, upload your APK there uh, before you release it to Google Play, even if there are some vulnerabilities that aren't real vulnerabilities, like if it logs information and that's not an issue in your case, then it's still very helpful to be reminded of these things, to think about these again, if it could be an issue in your case. And of course, to also see if there are some real vulnerabilities that you haven't thought about. Like for example, you had also detected uh, your app contains hardcoded plain text HTTPS URLs. Why could that be an issue? Well, here in this case, it found this compose feedback URL, which is probably included in some kind of log or so of Compose, which is not an issue in this case, but it could be an issue in some other cases. Or let's say you have some emails in your code by maybe team members, by your company's boss or so, then you don't probably want attackers to find this email and to spam it or whatever. And that would also be detected here by AppSweep. So the fix in this case would be using DexGuard, which is also a tool they provide. You can encrypt this stuff. Um, but you can see they, they always provide very helpful and readable recommendations here. So if this was something you actually liked and enjoyed and learned something new, then definitely do create an account here on AppSweep. Thanks again, GuardSquare, for sponsoring this video. And if you want to learn more about app security and you want me to make more videos about this, then definitely do let me know that down below. Apart from that, I wish you a brilliant rest of the week. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.